Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and it is time for more Scuttlebutt. This week's game in the background brought to you by Tier 10 Premium European Destroyer Smaland. When we were first testing Smaland, I was very not sold on the ship. I was absolutely in love with the Tier 10 tech tree ship, Holland, but I was not super keen on Smaland. I loved What I loved about Holland was the defensive fire. I loved the ability to push a button and just raise a big old middle finger to the carrier player and tell him, not today, Buana, go look elsewhere. And Smallland, of course, trades that defensive fire consumable for a short duration, short range radar. And she gives him a couple of torpedo, a couple of torpedo tubes as well. But the more I have played Smallland, the more I have changed my opinion of this ship. I've been uh, I've been working through the strong-willed campaign. Uh, finally, I, I spent about the first three months kind of ignoring it, and now it's like, well, I should probably finish. So, and there's several tasks along the way that require you to play in Smallin. And I've actually decided I really, really enjoy this ship. And it's, it took me by surprise. Um, and it shouldn't, in a way, because this is very, very much almost the exact same ship as Holland. The torpedoes are a little weaker, she does have fewer of them, and like I said, she trades the defensive fire for radar. But there's just something about this ship, man. I've just had such good luck with it. She still murders airplanes really, really well. You're going to see some of that this game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't really explain it. She is pricey, right? I think it's 2 million free XP for one of these. So I don't know that I'd run right out and buy one uh, unless you had a, just a whole bunch of free XP laying around. But if you have the opportunity and you're a destroyer lover like me, I got to say, guys, I feel like this ship has been worth would be worth the investment. I'm really enjoying her. But enjoy the game. Uh, what's going on in Shooty Boats? Um, we'll talk about something we haven't talked about in a long time, and that is the Anchors Away Tour. For a while there, when when um, the world shut down, and, and I, you know, this, I, it was just in my brain, I was like, oh, this is going to last, you know, three or four months, and then we'll all get back to our lives. Um, I, I kind of kept giving updates on the Anchors Away Tour. But I've kind of gotten out of that habit for a while, and I went the other day just to have a check on the page and see, like, all right, well, where are we at? Like, what's canceled? And sure enough, uh, all the tour dates are canceled up through November's visit to USS Iowa. So they've already made the decision to cancel. Um, of course, we weren't going to be able to hold anything at Hyde anyway right now. The American U.S. border is closed. I'm sorry, the Canadian U.S. border is closed. Um, but then... Uh, the September event at Massachusetts, October's event uh, aboard USS Alabama, and November's event aboard USS Iowa are all are all postponed. Basically, they don't see none of these say canceled. They're going to reorganize this tour again once they get things off. So the currently the next the next the next um, anchors away event on the calendar that is still not officially postponed yet right now is early December's event aboard USS Lexington in Corpus Christi, Texas, which I'm actually planning on going to. So. Hmm, we'll see. I mean, a lot can happen in what amounts to four months, right? I mean, think back four months ago, uh, five months ago, where, you know, the world was, was barely even dealing with this yet, at least most of the Western world anyway. And now here we are all five months later, and we, can, we can't... We, you know, it's, it's part of your everyday life. For all we know, in five more months, it will be back to just the opposite again. I don't think so. I think there's too many, too many, uh, um, too many scaredy cats out there, but uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, unfortunately, Anchors Away still postponed for a while. I am going to give the uh, regular weekly shout-out to the forum contest. Hapa has been crushing it lately here on NA with all the forum swag, and, and, and he's got banners up on the forums now. So guys, if you don't participate in the forums, that's fine. Okay, I get it. Uh, not you know Arguing with internet strangers is not for everyone, all right? I, I understand this fully. I've been doing it for 25 years, so I'm kind of immune to a lot of things. But not everybody is. I get it. However... Even if you only go over there to post in his contest, I really would encourage you to do that because he's giving away free stuff just for showing up and posting a screenshot, usually for something very, very, very easy to achieve. These are not like some really difficult go kill five ships or in a Kraken kind of thing. This is play a game at a German ship or something and win a couple and win some camos, right? Like, you're probably going to be doing some of this stuff anyway. So just every week, make it a habit to your, of your regular rounds to go check out the forum contest, especially here on NA, and, and go get some free stuff just for literally pasting a screenshot into the forums. It's no big deal. Give that a shot. Um, We talked last time about um, carrier 
toxicity. Uh, the general toxicity of the of the community towards carriers and carrier players. And there's been some developments over the last few weeks that have really kind of uh, driven this home to me. I was very disappointed to see some things. Um, one of them has been, I was a little disappointed in, in kind of how Wargaming handled the situation. Uh, initially, right? I was, I was some confusion here. Um, several other streamers, particularly here on NA in uh, Devastating Strike, 07, reigning, reigning king of the sea uh, champions, Devastating Strike, um, had been spamming a lot of divisions... Um, with uh, playing Double Kid Akizuki or Double Akizuki Kid. Uh, they had kind of each gone with a different variant of this. And the idea was that essentially when you ban those three destroyers together and you keep them in ranges of each other, they are largely immune to carrier strikes in terms of you got all the, all the different AA, all the AA that's available. The planes will not really survive to make meaning, land meaningful damage, uh, especially not against a kid, which has um, defensive fire and heals. Um, and also just, you know, uh, the smokes and everything else, like, it, they made they made a point of using these divisions to to go out and hunt down carriers. And several people were stre would stream these, right? And and the goal, it seemed to me from my perspective, um, let, me, let me back up. There, apparently after a while, um, somebody, I don't know who, somebody at Wargaming started taking issue with the way this was being done. Now, when I first heard about this, I was really upset because... It's not, in my opinion, it should never be okay for um, Wargaming or any other game company to demonize, penalize, whatever, penalize, let's say, penalize players for utilizing totally valid game mechanics to combat something in the game, right? Uh, if I can utilize some mix of game mechanics that are already in World of Warships to deal with radar or planes or battleships or whatever... That should be totally okay, right? And if if for some reason one of those mechanics is an exploit or oops, we didn't mean it to work that way, all right, that's a different conversation we have. But like, Wargaming has been telling people for years to band together for AA protection. That's all these guys are doing, right? They're taking out three ships designed to band together for AA protection, and they're just running around the board, uh, essentially trying to hunt the CV to uh, to extinction, right? To, 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 to hunt him down and, and kill him, uh, kill the enemy carrier, first, essentially. That was always the goal with these things. Now, there's an argument to be made that doing that, the way they went about it, certainly the, the gloating and the taunting that went on was eh, you know, probably not the best thing they could have been doing, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, the, 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 only, the only gripe I would say that I have about how this kind of got managed was that... Um, it, from my perspective, it felt like the goal of the whole exercise was to bully people into not playing carrier. And I don't feel like that's okay, right? Like, the whole point of it is, look, we're going to make these divisions, we're going to highly publicize them with videos and streams, and the goal is, we are going to, the message we're sending is, if you play carrier, we're coming for you. This is going to happen to you eventually. We will find you, and we will kill you. And you will be powerless to stop it. Now, that's, of course, not true. Um, not for exclusively for the carrier player. The carrier player, honestly, really is pretty powerless in those situations, right? Um, however, what it was that we find, and we've talked about this before on the channel, there are a lot of carrier players that have bad hull position, bad situational awareness. They don't think about um, the, the defense of their own hull until it's far, far too late. And so, are there valid ways you could defend against this tactic and things you could be tried? Yes, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert at solving this problem, this tactical issue, because I haven't played against this div. But the bottom line is that that a lot, you know, they're always they're, they're always going to catch you know mediocre and bad carrier players out because they don't they don't turn their engines on until ten minutes into a match. Okay, that's always going to be a thing. But I was just really frustrated with the with the kind of some of the attitude. But the mechanics they were using was totally legal. And and anyway, wargaming there, there was there were some incidents apparently along the way that wargaming took notice of all of this, and. Um, made some changes to their um, their access to certain special programs that Wargaming runs kind of off to the side. And when I first heard about this, I was really upset. I was not okay with this because um, the message that I had read basically was that they were sanctioned because they were doing this, and that's not okay. Uh, it turns out that, that there's more to it than that, and and can't I don't even know the whole story. I wasn't a part of it. The only people who know the whole story are Wargaming and and the guys involved in this. Um, 
But it turns out that there actually were some other concerns along the way that led them to make some of the decisions they did. I did get that. I did that get that cleared up for me. So I'm a little I'm a little less angry uh, as I was. But the short answer is, you know, guys, we talked last time about about the whole carrier thing and being jackasses to other players. I guess my thing is this, okay? I have no issue with these divisions, okay? I've never run into one, but I play enough carrier that sooner or later I probably will. That's fine. You do you, okay? My thing is this. Um, if you're going to play this, man, just go out there and leave what you're, leave the statement you're trying to make on the battlefield, okay? There's no need to taunt the other team or the other carrier, right? Don't go into chat and be a D-bag. It's not necessary, Okay. You're already you're already sending your message by what you're playing. Believe me, it's re it's received. Okay, so just just do your thing and get on with life. Go own the carrier, smile and nod, throw him a, throw him a, a, an 07, a little salute there, and and get on with your day. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, dev blog posts. What else have we got going on? Let's see. Let me go over here and look. Um, since we're on the subject. Uh, you know, talking about carriers and AA, they posted a dev blog change yesterday. They're going to do some some closed testing to um, AA and detectability ranges. <sighs> there's a lot of, there's a lot of confusion around this post, and so I'm going to try and help people understand because there are a lot of you out there, and I'm, this is the collective you. I'm not calling them out specifically that still I think don't play enough carrier to understand the, the at least the, the, the basic mechanics. And the reality is this: okay, one of the only reasons that a carrier gets a strike off on a destroyer. Is usually twofold. One is the destroyer has his AA up, and I have five, six kilometers to line that up, and I know where he is, and I can easily get a strike on him. The other is, depending on the destroyer in question, his aerial detection is probably between two and a half and three kilometers. Okay, and for most rocket planes, that's enough for me to get a runoff, especially if I'm running up, uh, running on him from a stern, and he's running away from me. Um, I've got gives me a few extra seconds to get the reticle lined up because just the relative velocity is the way it works out. So, um, the idea here is that what Wargaming has said that they're going to do, they're going to wipe across the board. They're going to chop every ship in the game's aerial detection. Okay, in exchange for doing that, um, what they're going to do is they're going to set it up so that when you manually disable your anti-aircraft by pressing the P key. That's Papa. The Papa key on your keyboard will turn your secondary batteries and your anti-aircraft guns off. It's a toggle. One presses off, one presses on. One presses off, and so on. You'll get a little notice on your screen. Okay, so if you don't know this and you're a destroyer player, pay attention, okay? Um, but when you turn them off, that's fine. You don't fire any AA. But when you turn them back on again, they will not instantaneously come back on at full power. There'll be a slow ramp up, you know, five, six, seven seconds or so. Um, they're also going to set it up so that AA guns will finally start firing... Um, at, at ranges that exceed their actual uh, range value. This is something that has been pointed out to them recently that is incongruous, right? My AA range says 5.8, let's say. Let's pick, pick, pick a high tier American ship. It's probably 5.8 kilometers, okay? But when you're fighting an enemy, enemy planes, those planes have to cross that threshold, and then there's some additional pause, and then your AA will start firing. So your effective AA range is maybe only 5.4 or 5.5 kilometers because of that little extra delay. Um, they're trying to they're trying to adjust for this, it looks like, and start allowing anti-aircraft uh, guns to start firing just outside so that by the time the planes actually enter the damage aura, the AA is up and running and ready to go. So I really approve of this. But I want to go back. To, I want to go back to the detectability range thing because this is huge. When they, if they're going to go in, they're going to slash everybody's aerial detection across the board. This is massive, guys. This is a massive buff to every every surface ship in the game and a massive nerf to every carrier in the game for two reasons. One, now it's way more challenging for a carrier to do to, to have the eye of Sauron. What do we always complain about when we're dealing with a carrier? The Eye of Sauron mechanics. He knows where everybody is, basically, at all times. And frequently, that is that is impacts. Who does it impact the most? Battleships. These ships that have 10, 12, 11 kilometer detection radiuses, you know, radii from the air. I don't have to get anywhere near his AA bubble, and I can see that guy from the air. That's going to drop now to something more, a little more challenging to spot. Let's pick a number. Uh, we're saying, let's say 40%. So down, maybe I like, say seven kilometers, right? That's still outside his AA range. I can still spot him without being shot back at, but I have to get much closer. He's much harder to spot on the surface. 
But the big winners here, guys, the big winners for this change, if it goes through as they're as they're testing it, is destroyers. Consider a a Shimakaze's aerial detection right now is on the order of what two and a half kilometers, something like this, two point four, whatever. If you cut that just in half, they're saying they're going to nerf this between 40 and 50 and 60 percent. So let's just split the difference. Let's say we cut that aerial detection in half. Now that Shimakaze is spotted by air at 1.2 kilometers, there is no, there are no rocket planes in the game. Not even Graf Zeppelin's super mega slow ones that can get a strike off in that amount of time. It can't happen. So it makes the spotting the destroyer much more challenging. For starters, it makes it harder to spot, right? You've got, he's got a much smaller bubble. You basically have to fly right over him to spot him, okay? That's one. The other is that even once I do spot him, getting a rocket strike off on him is way harder. Way harder. Because now I basically have to start the rocket strike before I've spotted him. Before I even know where he is, I have to I have to engage, I have to start the attack run. And I have to guess. So now it becomes a lot more challenging. Now the carrier player has to try and outthink the destroyer player. The destroyer player has the ability to attempt to outmaneuver the planes because he can make course corrections without the carrier player seeing them. Right? For at least for at least up until the very, very end of the run. And by that time, depending on how the engagement has gone, it's probably too late. So I'm really excited for this change. This is something that I'm very glad to see them testing. I doubt it'll make it to live in exactly this form, but I'm really glad to see them at least going this route because I think it's necessary. Um and yeah, that's that's probably about it. The other big news, of course, today, starting on Friday, this is Friday the 21st of August. The big summer sale starts today. Lots of really fascinating stuff in here, guys. You should check this out. Um, you can't earn too many of these tokens in the game. If I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, you're only earning 15 of these in the game. However, you can buy some of these in the shop, and they're offering um, access to some containers that you ordinarily wouldn't have access to. Now, the ones that I really want to highlight here, um, the two Black Friday containers, Black Friday 2018 and Black Friday 2019. These are pretty good value. These are worth 20 tokens apiece. You've got a pretty good chance at, a, at one of the, the special black camoed premiums. And the other, the other nice thing is the stuff that comes in this container, right? A chance at two weeks of premium, uh, 35,000 doubloons, I'm sorry, 12,500 doubloons, 35,000 free XP, 20, uh, 20 of the Shadow Lurker camos, or 10 of the uh, the the fancy the the 400 percent um, uh, XP camos and I forget what those are the type type 52 or something I can't remember um, those co those those in my mind either one of those containers are worth the money but the other one I really want to highlight is the air supply container these are worth 20 tokens a piece again in the little in game store these each of these has a chance to drop one tier eight premium aircraft carrier uh, from the list of Enterprise Graf Zeppelin Kaga or Saipan. And this is right now the only way you can get Enterprise. Okay, keep this in mind, right? Enterprise is not currently for sale, but apparently she's still available in this container. If you don't get one of those ships, even then, you're still getting a very good chance at 20 of the special economic flags, right? These are really great flags for grinding new lines or anything like that. 12,500 coal, that's pretty good. Or 20, it looks like 20 of the sci-fi camos, which aren't too bad either. So if you're going to be spending tokens on container drops... My recommendation is you look at the Black Friday containers or the air supply containers. Those are all really good choices. They also have all these premium ship containers available. And those the, the exact contents of those are listed in this, uh, this portal article. I'll link this up here. You guys go check this out. This week-long summer sale is going to come and go pretty quick. Um, but there's lots of good stuff in here uh, for you new players or you know returning vets that are have, looking for, to fill some gaps in their premium collection or whatever. So definitely check that out. All right, guys, that's that's probably going to wind this one down. I kind of kind of hit all the topics I really wanted to hit for now. Um, in the meantime, appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this game in Smalland. Thanks for dropping by on Twitch. I appreciate your patience while I was out last week on YouTube. Um, family stuff had to come first, and it always will around here. And luckily, I, I know there's a lot of you guys that just nod along and say, hey, no problem. But in, in case you were wondering, uh, we did have some family stuff to deal with. So I'm back now, though. All's well. So you guys be safe. Wash your hands out there, and I'll catch you next time.